All rise. Ve vuleve. The International Criminal Court is now in session. L'audience de la Cour Penale Internationale est ouverte. Please be seated. Ve vous asseoir. Thank you very much, Court Officer. Please, the case. Thank you, Mr. President. The situation in the Republic of Kenya in the case of the prosecutor versus William Samuel Ruto and Joshua Arab Seng, ICC 0109-0111. We're in open session. Thank you very much. Appearances? Good morning, Mr. President. Your Honours, appearances are the same for the prosecution. Good morning, Your Honours. Uh, the same as before. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, Mr. Michel Bourgeois, duty counsel for the, for the witness. Good morning, Mr. President. The team for um, Judge Arab Sum remains the same. Uh, good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. The team for Mr. Ruto remains as yesterday. Witness, welcome back. And Mr. Can will continue his cross-examination. Mr. Can has indicated um, th this exercise will have to be completed today uh, with enough time for the prosecutor to do the re-examination. I'm most grateful. Yes. Uh, Mr. President, with the court's leave, uh, I, I, we could c continue in public session. Proceed. Uh, witness, you'll recall yesterday before we adjourned for the day uh, I was uh, asking you questions regarding your account uh, that you gave the court regarding your movements on the 31st of December of 2007. Do you remember that? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, and you will recall that I put it to you that uh, your account uh, was fabricated and you were not in Ziwa. Do you remember that? I was in Ziwa. Uh, and you will recall... Uh, that I put it to you that the account of um, Mr. Jack Kibor um, giving uh, an envelope and saying it was from Mr. Ruto, uh, that's also made up entirely by you. Do you remember me saying that to you? That is your, your story, Your Honour. Uh, and witness, uh, what I want you to look at now, because it's another reason why I say it's uh, as clear as daylight that you're making up the story, is uh, what you told CHRD. Uh, and, Your Honours, I refer to a defence exhibit EVD 311. Uh, it's uh, at Ken D09 uh, 0043-0277. And... Uh, is there a tab? Uh, yes, Mr President. The tab uh, is given yesterday, it's uh, 218. And I'd ask that that be put on screen in the courtroom only, and we could go straight to 0280. So just for the courtroom only, page 0280. And, Mr. Witness, I'm just going to read the first paragraph uh, of that document which you agree you, you wrote and you signed. Uh, in the first paragraph, you say this, and I quote, On 31st, people went to my house looking for my head. Lucky enough, I was not in the house, and I was informed by a phone by a lady friend who asked me not to step there because a group of armed youths were there looking for me, end quote. Uh, do you remember, Mr. Witness, saying that? I cannot remember that, Your Honour. You see, Witness, uh, I, I want to be very clear. Uh, I'm putting to you in very straightforward terms that the narrative you've given the prosecution and the narrative you've told the court about going everywhere, all these different places, on the 31st of uh, December uh, 2007, 
is entirely uh, fictitious. Do you understand? Not true, Your Honour. Uh, Mr. President, I'll move on to another subject with your leave. Uh, and by the way, witness, uh, are you aware that Mr. Uh, Fred Capondi, that you uh, have inserted into that story, uh, on the 31st of December, uh, he was actually in Kitali at that time, 57 kilometers at least from Ziwa. Are you aware of that? That is your creation, Your Honour. Uh, and Mr. President, uh, the uh, basis of that uh, is the same. Uh, at the same tab, uh, the telephone records uh, that I uh, referred to yesterday as the foundation. Mr. Witness, I'm going to move now to your story about the 1st of January, just uh, one 2008. Matter. I'm sorry to, to intervene at this point. Just so the record can be clear, page 3, and I think this is just an error by Defence Counsel. It says, uh, Mr. Witness, I'm just going to read the first paragraph of that document which you agree you wrote. The, the witness never agreed that he wrote the, the document. It was written by someone else. Yes, that's quite right, and I'm grateful for that. That's the document you say that you gave to that particular group uh, and the document that you signed. That's right, isn't it, witness? I don't know if it have created it or what. Yes. Now, I'm going to move to the 1st of January 2008, uh, and I'll do this quite quickly. And, and again, witness, uh, you, you gave in 2010, 2011, uh, 2012, you spoke to the prosecution many times, didn't you? Yes, Your Honour. And you told uh, the prosecution and you told the court uh, that in the morning uh, you went to the mortuary. Do you remember saying that? I cannot remember that, Your Honour. Uh, do you remember uh, a tragic, an awful event, the Kiamba church burning? Yes, I just had, I didn't, I didn't, uh, uh, Confirm that I was there. Yeah. Did you go to the mortuary or you can't remember? I go, but uh, that one is, cannot be clear about it. Uh, did you go on the 1st of January or can you not remember? I go later in the afternoon, later uh, during the day. Uh, what time in the afternoon did you go to the mortuary? Uh, and uh, the last reference was at line uh, 1173. Uh, and I'll just read it completely into the record. Mr. President, just give me a moment, please. <laughs> so, at uh, Ken OTP 0028-1104, at page 1157, you're asked at line 1744, okay, by the investigator. Okay, yeah, and, and what did you see? This saw a woman running, and you say at 1747. We're in open session, Mr. President. I'm sorry to intervene once again, just for the record to be clear. On page six, and I think it's line Line 19, the question by Mr. Khan, I think, is actually what it states here is then you go on further and see beheadings. That was not the testimony of the witness. The witness never claimed to have seen the beheadings in Langas. Yes, Mr. President, I, that's correct. I did clarify it in the next uh, yes, few yes, words, and I talked about heads on sticks. Move on, um, move on. Uh, witness, now, you spoke to the prosecution, my... Uh, learned friend Mr. Garcia and members of the prosecution uh, between the 10th of November and 20th of November uh, of this year. Do you remember that? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, just before you gave evidence? Yes, Your Honour. And you uh, went through over those 10 days between 
60 to 70 hours, you went through your various uh, transcripts, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, and at, at the, uh, in, as part of that process over those 10 days, you uh, clarified certain things, is that right? Perfect, Your Honour. Yes. Uh, and the prosecution took notes? Yes, Your Honour. Yes. And it was videoed, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Now, you told the prosecution when you were first, uh, when you first spoke to them in April 2010 that the first meeting you attended uh, was uh, where planning meetings were being discussed. Planning for violence was on the 2nd of September 2007. Do you remember saying that? I've already declared that to us, I get from Sosion. A witness, please. I want you to answer my question. These can be answered yes or no, and then I will go into it in more detail. Do you understand? So you remember telling the prosecution in your screening interview in April 2010 that uh, you attended a planning meeting, planning for violence, uh, on the 2nd of September 2007 that was chaired by the current Minister of Agriculture, Honourable Ruto. Do you remember saying that? Yes or no? I remember saying earlier. Yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, witness... Mr. Khan, at line 21, you did say December, uh, September, right? Yes, Mr. President, I'm most grateful I did say September. I have post-its uh, hiding the screen, unfortunately. Um, it's my fault. Um, and, and witness, you went on and you said uh, that uh, Mr. Ruto was saying it was time, high time, to unite the Kalenjin community to defend themselves against their enemies, the Kikuyus. Do you remember saying that? I can't remember that, Your Honour. You can't remember uh, that. And you told the prosecution that the meeting was announced on CAS by Joshua Sang. Do you remember saying that? I can't remember that, Your Honour. I've already said it was not my testimony. Yeah. Well, witness, you, you spent about 60 to 70 hours going over your transcript, so let me be precise. When you were later interviewed by the prosecution, and Your Honour, it's at tab 10, of the first prosecution binder, um, Ken-OTP-0028-0776. At page 0802, uh, and I'll I'll read uh, just cut to the chase at, from line 846. Yeah, you were told by the investigator uh, that the evidence you were giving about that alleged planning meeting was quote very important. Do you remember saying that? I already make it clear, Your Honour, that this testimony I will not take it because I just get from South Your Honour. Uh, witness, we'll, we'll come to that. Uh, 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 we'll, uh, witness, we'll come to that. But I, I'm, I'm going to read you at line 848 what the investigator says. Quote, quote, this coordination meeting is very important for me. At 854, the investigator says, quote, and it is important. This is why I'm telling you. I'm going to ask you some very detailed questions about it. And at 857, the investigator says, and I quote, and you need to be accurate and precise. Do you remember all of that? I can't remember, Your Honour. You can't remember? Yes. And despite being told how important this planning meeting is, uh, you went on and gave a story that you paid 300 shillings to gain access to the meeting at Siriqua Hotel uh, on the 2nd of September 2007. Do you remember saying that? No, Your Honour, I've already said it's not association. Yes, Your Honour, the transcript reference is tab 10 of the prosecution's binder, number 1, Ken OTP-0028-0776. Uh, well, let me go on, witness, because the investigator asks you a lot of information about that meeting and in fact goes on and talks about it being a secret meeting. And at tab 10 of the first prosecution binder, Ken OTP-0028-0776, uh, line 740, um, this is what is said. You say at line 736 that you go into the meeting and, quote, we had a prayer, 738, we said a prayer. Uh, you asked at line 740, were you at this meeting? 
at 745, you say, the back of the seat. 747, in the back seat. And then uh, you talk about it at 750. Yeah, it's not a, a, a big hall. You paint a picture at 752, and other people were standing. 753, the investigator says, okay, you were there, is that correct? And at 757, you say, yes, I'm standing at, I was standing at the back, end quote. You've heard all of that, haven't you? You've heard that, witness? Uh, no, Your Honor, I've already said that this is not my story, Your Honor. But witness, I'm coming to that, but that's what you told the prosecution in the tape-recorded uh, interview, isn't it? I cannot deny that, Your Honor, but I've already said it was not my story. And witness, you've had those tapes of those recordings for the last four years, haven't you? Yes, Your Honor. So and that's what you said in August 2010, more than four years ago. Uh, and then you give a story at page 813, at 1228, quote, uh, uh, people went in on their own. And at 12... Sorry, page what? Where? Uh, line at, or page? At page 813, at line 1228, that the witness is giving, we say, a further details to lend plausibility to his account at 1228. People went in on their own at 1230, and I went. I went in on my own, and I sat in the back. 1232, uninvited. And at 1284, you say people were standing, and a lot of people were in front of me. You remember all of that, witness? No, Your Honor. You say at 1234, 1234 on page 814, that I was not invited. At 1250, I was not an invited guest, and so on and so forth. And in fact, a witness at uh, page 0812, uh, lines 1166 to lines 1178, uh, you even offered to draw a sketch of that meeting, of that secretive meeting, lines 1178, secretive meeting, for the prosecution. Do you remember that? Do you remember offering to draw it? No, you are And you were offering to draw it to lend plausibility to a completely fraudulent account, weren't you? Well, Isn't that right, witness? I have already... In, in under hold that I've declared this your honor that it's not a story that I, I want to stand for it. Yes, witness, because you waited four years before telling the prosecution in November of this year, just before you knew you were going to be cross-examined, that that was a lie and you were not at that meeting. Isn't that right? Not true, your honor. Yeah. Well, did you deny attending that meeting to the prosecution? I've already... Them. Witness, if you can answer my question, because the court, we were not there, so we need to make a record. I have already done Witness, it. please allow me to finish. We need to make a record in the transcript of what is the situation. And I'm putting it to you that you told the prosecution in November that you lied and that you were not at that meeting that you described to the prosecution in 2010. Is that correct or not? I didn't say I lied. I said I get from source. There is a difference between getting from source and then lie. Yeah. Uh, witness, do you agree that you were not at that meeting? I've already said it from source. If I say from source, it's already clear that I was not there. Yes. So, witness, there shouldn't be difficulty speaking the truth, should there? I've already said the truth even now, yeah. Yes. And you told the prosecution in 2010 and onwards you were there. Isn't that right? I've already said that it was... Uh, I believe that you were there, but I say it was a source of your donor. You didn't say you believed you. You said you were at that meeting. Mr. Uh, Ken, do you think you've made your point? Uh, Ms. President, I'll, I'll move, move on. And, and witness, you knew that statement, that account, was going to be used in confirmation proceedings by the prosecution, didn't you? They told you about that. I've already said that it was true, so on. And if it is uh, there, then I've already said that it's not uh, perfect, Your Honor. Yes, not perfect. In fact, well, we move on because what we say are the lies don't stop there. You gave another account, uh, and in your screening to the prosecution in April 2010, uh, you describe 
a meeting at Mr. William Ruto's home on the 2nd of November 2007. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And when so you this, were in so this is a different meeting now, yes. Mr. Ken. Yes, the first yes. Siriqua. All right. And this is now at allegedly uh, at Mr. Ruto's Segoy home. Uh, and the witness stated uh, in the screening that he was there. And he stated, quote, that the purpose of the meeting was to organize the coordinators and discuss how to plan the attacks in the South, Central, and Rift Valley. Uh, do you remember telling that to the prosecution in your phone interview in April 2010, witness? can't remember that, you but can't. I say, say that it's not my story at all. Yes, yes. Have you put the screening note to the witness? Mr. President, I, I will move on to the, to the interview. In fact, that's where the, the detail is. Uh, screening note. We have the screening note uh, as well, but, Your Honour, in the interest of time, there's so much to deal with. Perhaps I go straight to the interviews. Uh, and, witness, you tell the prosecution uh, in your first interview that uh, the meeting at Mr. Ruta's home is on the 2nd of September 2007. That's your interview of the 8th of August 2010. And then you correct it uh, in your second interview on the 6th of June 2011, and you say, actually, the meeting at Mr. Ruto's home is on the 2nd of November 2007. You remember that? And you say this at Ken. Do you remember that, witness? I can't remember, but that is, I, if I recollect it, I'm still saying it was not my yes. story. And Mr. President, I refer now to tab 10 of the prosecution's bundle, Ken dash OTP dash 0028 dash 0713 at page 0751 uh, and witness in time I, I can't go through all the the issues but let me just read some of the the detail that you made up we say uh, at 1251 you say quote yes one I was second one second Mr. Kent. What tab did you say? Mr. President, tab nine of the prosecution's uh, binder, Ken OTP-0028-0713. And it's at page 0751. And, Mr. Witness, let me read it at 12.51. Uh, you say, quote, yes, I was present. At 12.54, quote, I was present and I heard what every participant said, end quote. At 12.55, the investigator says, okay, what time did you attend the meeting, end quote. And you say at 12.58, quote, at 11, uh, 100 hours, 11.00. Around. At around 11.00. And at 12.60, line 12.60, on that page, 0751, uh, you say, but, quote, but, uh, if there were so many people, then I came out of the meeting and I went to see my friend. The investigator at 12.62 says, okay, what did you hear? How long, did, how long were you at the meeting for? Uh, and you say at 12.65, and I left around 11, around 11, and went back at around 1, till the end of the meeting. 12.66, the investigator says, okay. And from 12.68, you say, because for, from 10 was just uh, prayer, prayer and rituals. Do you remember saying that, witness? And record, Your Honor. You can't recall. So... It goes further, the, the details, because then at tab 10 of uh, Prosecution Binder 1, Ken OTP 0028-0776, at page 0785, so page 0785, you say at lines 287 that the meeting, quote, the meeting finished at 290 quote, about five, quarter past five, end quote. 
292 or so. And you say at 294, quote, everyone went back home. And at 297, I went back to Eldoret town, end quote. So witness, that's what you told the prosecution. And you knew, you, you've told the prosecution just a few days ago that you were never at that meeting. Isn't that right? Perfect, Your Honor. Hmm. And you're aware, uh, following the confirmation proceedings as you did, that the uh, pre-trial chamber re relied upon your evidence of your presence at this meeting, at these two meetings, to confirm the case against Mr. William Ruto. You're quite aware of that, aren't you? Not really, Your Honor. I'm sure you looked at uh, the confirmation decision, paragraph 126 and 133, having such an interest in this case, and you're aware she referred specifically to your presence and your evidence being at these meetings to make sure that the case came here before this trial chamber. Witness, don't answer that question. Mr. Ken, you can argue about that when the time comes. Uh, Mr. President, I'm grateful. At line, uh, page 24, line 23, uh, it's written inaudible. I, I think the witness said uh, yes. He said yes, yeah. Um, witness. In fact, you went so far to give some credibility, you hope, to your account, that you drew a sketch of Mr. Ruto's house, didn't you? Do you remember, perhaps it can be put on the screen, it's tab uh, 61 of the prosecution's uh, uh, folder. Ken dash OTP dash 0036 dash 0096 and it can, uh, it's got a signature so it has to be only in this courtroom. <coughs> Witness, you remember drawing a sketch, do you, to the I prosecution? I wanted to say it was from Sosio Order. Uh, Witness, uh, did you draw a sketch or did somebody else come in and draw it? I remember drawing it. And you drew that sketch because you were trying to give anything you could to make the prosecution believe that your account was authentic. Isn't that right? Isn't that the case? No, through your honor. And you see what's on the screen, don't you, witness? I can see one. Yeah, that's what you drew, isn't it? I can't remember, your honor. You can't? I can't remember. You can remember, yes. <laughs> and that's what you say is the layout of Mr. Ruto's house. Is that correct? That's what you told the prosecution. This is the layout of Mr. Ruto's house. Uh, of course I was there. Look, I'll do a drawing for you. That's what you did, isn't it? I wouldn't say that it was actually that way, Your Honor. And you told the prosecution in your uh, witness clarifications um, that, in fact, you've never in your life been to Mr. Ruto's home. Isn't that the case? Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would ask to have uh, exhibited uh, both the witness preparation log at tab 196 and the witness clarifications at tab 197 uh, and also the sketch of the witness. One at a time. Let's, let's, um, so the first document is what and where did you say it is? Uh, defense tab 196. It's uh, witness clarifications. Ken... OTP-0146-0088, it's a document emanating from the uh, Office of the Prosecution. The witness has accepted he attended uh, that witness preparation during that period. There cannot be uh, concerns regarding the uh, authenticity of the document, and given the witness's evidence, we say it should be exhibited. Mr. Yes, yeah. No objection, Your Honour. Ms. Baisman? No, obje no objection. The document is admitted as the next route to a defence exhibit. I'm grateful, Mr. President. And then the next is the witness preparation log. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> and then the next is the witness clarifications. 
which have not been exhibited, I believe. It's Ken OTP-0146-0088 at tab 197. Uh, Mr. Ken, the document at the tab 196 of your bundle is ending up with 0083. Yes, I, I'm... I'm uh, Mr. President, also the witness preparation log at 196 is just the time periods and the days uh, and time that the witness had uh, to go over his story, and that's at Ken OTP-0146-0083, please. Mr. Garcia? No objection, Your Honor. Ms. Bassman? No objection, Mr. President. Admitted. That's the next brutal defense exhibit. I'm grateful. The confidential document KEN OTP 0146-0088 will bear the number EVD T D0900322, and the confidential document KEN OTP 0146-0083 will bear the number EVD T D0900323. I'm grateful. And Mr. President, uh, the last document in the sequence, uh, the sketch, the map that appears in the, the sketch, allegedly, of Mr. Ruto's home, that appears at tab 61 of the prosecution's bundle. The witness says uh, it comes from the prosecution. In fact, it was prepared with the prosecution, and he's uh, accepted under oath that he drew the thing. And it's at Ken OTP-0036-0096. Mr. Garcia. No objection, Your Honor. Ms. Beisman. No objection. Document admitted as the next Ruto defense exhibit. The confidential document KEN OTP 0036-0096 will bear the number EVD T D0900324. Great and a witness, uh, you also went through your the affidavit. Uh, Mr. President, perhaps we can go into private session for a moment. Private session. We are back in open session, Mr. President. Thank you. I'm grateful. And uh, witness, you've told uh, the court, told the prosecution that uh, after four years, um, four years after giving your original account, you accepted that you were not at at least two meetings that you had told the prosecution you were at. That's correct, isn't it? What I do and that also you had retracted certain other allegations that you had made against the Honourable Raila Odinga. That's right, isn't it? I just um, say how we were saying. I didn't say it didn't mean whatever, but I say he was not referring to you directly, but he was saying a tsunami. And after telling all of these matters to the prosecution, um, they uh, told you they still wanted you to come and be a witness in this courtroom, is that right? If they prepare me and that they make me to come here, then that is right, Your Honor. Mr. President, we can go on to another subject with the court's leave. Uh, Mr. Witness, you gave uh, an account that you uh, attended the funeral of Lucas Sang. Yes, Your Honor. 
And uh, where was that funeral? Around Kuinetere. Was it in a church, or in a field, or in uh, a Instead, building? Homestead. I'm sorry? Home area. But, but where? Can you tell us the physical site of the, the event? Like, was it in a church? Was it in a building? Was it in a field? Was it in a, a cemetery? Where was it? Compound. Uh, what compound? Homestead. Whose homestead? Lucas Homestead. And uh, why did you go to that memorial event? I go there with honor because I wanted to go. Uh, but Lukasang is... Uh, uh, Lukasang is, uh, was leading a group of people of many thousands that you say um, scared you to death. Isn't that right? Yes. And so, so why, why did you go to the memorial? If I go, I decide to go, Your Honor. Mm. That's the problem. I don't see any problem. Mm. By then. Yes. So you, you told the prosecution you attended that. And you said that uh, various people spoke. Do you remember saying that? Yes, Your Honor. For example, you say that uh, Jackson Kibor spoke. Remember saying that? Yes, Your Honor. You said he was speaking uh, in what? Uh, in, a, in an insightful manner? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, and you say at Ken OTP 0028 1303 at uh, 1325 and then again at 1327, that at line 810, that Mr. Jackson Kabor said, myself and Subaywa, it's spelled S-U-B-E-I-Y-W-A, we are old people. Remember saying that? Yes, Your Honor. At 812, so we don't uh, know what will happen. Remember saying that? Yes, Your Honor. Sorry, I'll re read that again. Quote, so we don't uh, know what will happen to us because we are old enough to die. Mr. Ken, did you tell us where this is? In yeah. the binder and tab? Um, Mr. President, it's at uh, Ken OTP-0028-1303 Two seven to one three three zero, and I'm going to be reading uh, at lines uh, seven nine nine. In fact, what binder you, binder and type. Uh, is prosecution uh, binder number uh, two uh, tab eighteen. I'm grateful, and Mr. President, I also just for the record, um, I also read, but I'm not going to go to it just for the record. Ken dash OTP dash zero zero two eight dash 1303 at page 1325 at line 721 to 735 at 725 um, sorry at 730 he's asked by the investigator uh, to recount the bits quote the bits that you think are insightful uh, and then I go over to page uh, 810 which is the extract that I quoted, and perhaps I'll, I'll start again, if the, Mr. President, you found the, the portion. Yes, uh, at, you better start again, because I've lost you. Yes, 810. Yes. So, Mr. President, it's a tab at 17 of the prosecution's binders. So it was my mistake, not 18. Tab 17. It's I, I do apologise. In fact, it is tab 18. So let me give. Let me start afresh. Ken 
OTP-0028-1301. Is the first page of tab 18 of that interview. And I'm going to start from uh, page 1328 and at lines uh, 810. At 810, the witness says this, and I quote, myself and Subaywa, S-U-B-E-I-Y-W-A, we are old people, so we don't know what will happen. And he is quoting, according to you, Mr. Jackson Kibor? Yes. yes. This relates to the witness's account of Jackson Kibor's speech. So we don't know uh, what will happen to us because we are old enough to die. That's at line 814. At line 818, quote, we have to use this opportunity to remove the Kikuyus at line 822. At line 825, quote, uh, they, they have to go far. They will have to go far, even farther than Navasha. And then it continues. The witness, conti witness you remember saying that, do you? Yes, Your Honour. And then it continues to line 838. He says, and I quote, and there was a fundraising that was supposed to assist the family. 843, quote, the witness says, quote, but for insiders, this fundraising, this fundraising was to buy those items. 845, quote, I mean guns. End quote. And then he's asked by the investigator at 846, okay, did he say that to buy guns? And at 851, the witness says, quote, he said that we have to uh, collect things and we have to import uh, these things from uh, an 854 Lakini. 858, he's asked by the investigator, quote, okay, did he say how they would remove the Kukuyus? And at 861, the witness says, quote, he said, he only said that the Kukuyu have to be removed by force, end quote. Witness, do you remember saying that? Yes, Your Honour. Yeah. And then you also, so the event really was for fundraising for weapons, is that right? Witness. Yes, Your Honour. The, the event was for fundraising for weapons, is that right? No, it was a funeral, Your Honour. But was it a, a, a front for fundraising to buy those items, to buy guns? It says items. I didn't put directly guns. Well, what things did you tell the prosecution at that time that Mr. G Kibor wanted imported from Lakini? If I say things, maybe things to use like guns, it's okay, Your Honor. So things to remove the Kukuyus? Yes, Your Honor. To remove them violently? Yes, Your Honor. By force? That is it. Uh, in your understanding, by killing them? If I say by force, it can be either way, Your Honor. Killing them or beating them up, but hurting them. Is that right? And be that way, Your Honor. Yes. And that, that's what you uh, meant when you were speaking to the prosecution. Is that right? I mean that, Your Honor. Is that what you meant, witness? Not mean, but what I saw, I told in this case. But that is how, if you remo want to remove people, you can use all... So, uh, what you're telling the prosecution at this time is that Ma uh, Mr. Jackson Kibor uh, is um, uh, saying that items should be bought to remove Kikuyus by force. Is that right? That is what I could imagine. That's the stand idea. Yes. That's what I. And for insiders, under cover of this funeral, under cover of that funeral, you're saying the real purpose was fundraising to buy those items. Is that right? That's at line 843. Is that right? That's what I could imagine, my dear. Yes, that's what you could imagine. And I'll move on to what else you say, witness. And just for the record, at line 861, the witness said, quote, he said, he only said that the cuckoos have to be removed by force. Okay, now, witness, you give a, an account that uh, Tabitha say... Uh, gave a speech. Do you remember saying that? 
Yes, Your Honour. In fact, uh, that's Ambassador yeah. Tabitha Say, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, Say is S E I I. Uh, and Ambassador Say, in fact, was the uh, Kenyan ambassador to the Republic of South Africa between 2002 and July 2007. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And in 1997, she was nominated as a member of parliament by His Excellency uh, Mwai Kibaki, the former president of the Republic of Kenya. Is that right? Of course, yes. Uh, and also, she was the former vice chairman of the Democratic Party of Kenya. Is that right? Yes. And the head of the Democratic Party of Kenya was President Kibaki. Is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, are you aware, witness, that her... Well, let me move forward to what you say, in fact. And, Mr. President, I'm referring to uh, Ken OTP-0028-0. Oh, sorry, 0028-1303 at page 1333 to 1335. And I'm going to read, uh, with the court's leave, from lines uh, 981. Uh, Mr. President, that's page 1333 in the uh, prosecution tab 18. And, Your Honour, it's clear from the preceding page uh, from 973, line 973, that the witness is talking about Tabitha Say. He says, Tabitha Say, at line 977, she was really hurt. At 981, quote, she said that I'm a woman. And uh, because young men are ready, I am, because I am a Young men are ready. I am also ready to put on, and at 989, quote, oh, if young men are not ready, I would, at 992, I am ready to go to fight. At 994, the witness says, quote, that was, uh, that was to uh, incite people to go for war, end quote. Do you remember saying that, witness? Yes, Your Honour. And at line one, uh, at line 997, you say, quote, when uh, a woman put herself forward to wear a uniform and go for war, at line 1000, quote, but men are supposed to be uh, strong to go to war. At line 1002, quote, so that's a challenging way to incite people to go to war. End quote. Remember saying all of that? And yes, that, Your Honour. And, Mr. President, that last quote uh, that's a challenging way to go to war is at line 1002. And if one turns over the page to 1334 at line 1004, you continued witness, did you not? Quote, and uh, that is a common practice in the past for uh, men. Uh, to incite men to go to war. Remember saying all of that? Yes, Your Honour. And uh, I'll go forward uh, to line 1026, again at page OTP, uh, Ken OTP 0028-1334, at line 1026, you said, but uh, the, the addresses were insightful. Remember saying that? Yes, Your Honour. You meant her address was insightful, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Right. Uh, and that the fight was supposed to be against the Kukuyus, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. And that's line 1032. And that means removing the Kukuyus by force, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Yes. So it was a very uh, violent speech, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Yes. Are you aware, uh, apart from being uh, appointed uh, by a head of state who happened to be from the uh, Kikuyu community. Are you aware that the daughter of Ambassador Tabitha Say uh, worked and helped Kikuyus at the IDP showground after the post-election violence? Are you aware of that? I'm not aware, Your Honor. Uh, are you aware she has a daughter called uh, Jerotich? J-E-R-O-T-I-T-C-H? I'm not aware, Your Honor. Uh, are you aware that another daughter of hers is married to a Kikuyu? I'm not aware, Your 
I don't know, Your Honor. Are you aware, in fact, that Ambassador Say is so uh, liked in the Kikuyu community in general, especially in the North Rift, that she has a Kikuyu nickname? Are you aware of that? No, Your Honor. Are you aware, in fact, that her Kikuyu nickname is Wathira, W-A-I-T-H-I-R-A? -A? This is the first time to hear. Mr. Ken, what has the work of Ms. Tabitha Say's daughters and the fact that the Kikuyus may have loved her dearly have to do with whether or not she said the things that the witness testified to having put in her mouth. Mr. President, it goes to, uh, hopefully by the end, if not already, the uh, absolute fabrication and plausibility of the witness's account that somebody who has such a history uh, and such links with the Kikuyu community, including her own daughter, who's married to a Kikuyu, uh, and her other daughter, who at the time, at the time, was felt safe enough to work uh, and assist Kikuyu IDPs at Eldoret Showground, would, uh, at that time, 10th of January, be telling Kikuyus to get out of the North Rift and they should be removed by force. So, Your Honours, it's relevant to that issue, we say. Well, we've indicated when you must finish your cross-examination, we're now going to extend your time. I'm grateful, Mr President. I'll move on to another issue. And witness, you, you gave an account that Mr. Joshua Sang was there, is that right? Yes, sir. And he spoke? Yes, sir. And you remember it well? Yes, sir. And he spoke before or after Jackson Kibor? The last one, Your Honor. The last one. So after Tabitha Say? Yes, sir. He was the very last person to speak? Yes, sir. And then the crowds dispersed? Then I, I go myself. I don't know if it's dispersed or not. All right. But the, the last person to speak, what happened... What made you leave after uh, Joshua Sang spoke? Yes, I leave you on, on my own decision. W was the event finishing? Is that why? I left for my own decision. I didn't follow any other thing, Your Honor. A and you tell uh, the prosecution that uh, Mr. Joshua Sang um, uh, gave the condolences of Mr. William Ruto. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, did he read out a message from Mr. William Ruto? I had just, you were saying just in mouth, Your Honor. Just what? He was just speaking. And, and saying what about Mr. William Ruto? He was saying that he has sent uh, the condolence. Right. Did he read a condolence message or, or what from Mr. William Ruto? What, what do you mean precisely? I can't remember, but he was just talking on PF. Uh, and and uh, apart from him, um, was any other uh, condolence message... Um, <laughs> Read out from Mr. William Ruto? I can't recall, Your Honor. You can't recall. And, and what languages were people speaking? Kalenjin, Your Honor. Apart from Kalenjin, any other language? Even Swahili sometimes. Even Swahili sometimes. And apart from that, is that it? I can't remember, Your Honor. You can't remember. And anybody else? Did anybody else speak that you know about? I can't remember another problem. Mr. President, I'm told I'm great. At uh, page uh, 45, 44. at page 44, at line uh, 15, the full answer is not recorded. What the witness said is, I can't remember, but he was reading, talking on behalf of him. So, Your Honour, is that right, witness? that Mr. Joshua Sang was speaking and talking on behalf of Mr. William Ruto? He was just giving his own sympathy and then had from Ruto. Yes. And the first speech you, you heard was from whom? I can't remember, Your Honour. So you, you hear uh, Tabitha say, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, you hear Joshua Sang? Yes, Your Honour. Jackson Kabor, you said, was before that? Yes, Your Honour. And before Tabitha say, other people were speaking? I can't recall, Your Honour. Well, how many people had spoken before Tabitha Say? I can't remember, Your Honour. How long had the event taken place before Tabitha Say started speaking? I can't recall, that's what I'm saying. Uh, were you, in fact, not even there? I was there, Your Honour. Uh, Mr. President, I will play with your leave. I... 
Well, Mr. President, uh, we can start now. Well, it may be a convenient time to break and come back a little bit later so we can deal with the video in one section. I mean, the... You mean I come back earlier? Uh, yes, please. Yes. We can rise now then. Uh, let us um, go into closed session. Usher the witness out. We'll rise and come back in 30 minutes. <laughs>